Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 41 of my short subject series, even though they aren't that short, and it's entitled Counterbores and Counterboring. So, what are counterbores? Well, I got a whole rack of them here and some more here. I got too many, really. So, let me explain the process and do a few samples for you and uh, talk about these wonderful tools. And in the following video, which will be number 42, I'll talk about spot facing. Similar, but not exactly the same. Here's a definition of counterboring. Counterboring is the operation of enlarging the end of a hole cylindrically as for a recess for a filister head screw or a socket head cap screw. And here's a definition of the tool that is called a counterbore. A counterbore is used to enlarge a portion of a cylindrical bore or hole. For example, a drilled hole may be enlarged for a little way to receive the head of a cap screw or a filister head screw. The pilot of the counterbore guides the tool so that the counterbore will be concentric with the hole in which it is used. You are looking at the headstock of my closing 12 inch lathe and you can see that the cover here for the gearbox has a series of counterboard holes where the cap screw is below the surface. And similarly the saddle on the closing lathe has several cap screws that are counterboard. And I stepped over to the bridge port and you're going to see all kinds of uh, components here that are held on by counterboard cap screws. As usual, there's a bit of overkill here in my shop for counterbores. I've got really three sets of them, of them here. This is the set I use the most often. I've had this set. It came from a gunsmith about, oh, 20 years ago, probably. And there's just an awful lot of counterbores here, different styles. And I want to show you the different kinds that are available. Now, there's other things in this rack also, as well as uh, tapered reamers and so on, but we're not going to talk about those. We're interested in the counterbores, and there are duplicates and repeats here in this end. I suppose I should say this first, that this is a spot facer. Notice how short it is, because with spot facing, you're only cutting the surface, whereas with a counterbore, you might be going in very, very deep. Usually not, usually just the length of the head of a cap screw or filister head screw. This is called the pilot and the cutting is actually done here on these three flutes. These are straight shanks. Some are available with taper shanks, however you want to buy them. And the good ones, of course, are high-speed steel. Usually these counter bores are marked as to the size and you can see that this is a Putnam brand. It used to be a very popular brand here in America, made in USA by the way, and use only high speed steel. So the pilot is half inch and the other diameter here, the cutting diameter, is three quarter. Now if you cannot read them, if that is damaged by spinning in a chuck. They really should mark them closer up here so that they can't get damaged. But you can see that this one has a half inch shank, a half inch pilot, and you cannot mic this or measure it because it's three flutes without a special uh, type of micrometer for that, that that can handle three fluters. So most of these are three flute. If in doubt, drill a test hole. This counter bore has a permanently attached pilot. As you can see, it is not removable. It's all one piece. Now here's another one where the pilot is removable. So there's a little set screw here and if you loosen that the whole pilot will pull out so that you can install a different pilot if necessary, most often you're going to buy these in a standardized size and you do not ever need to remove the pilot, but you'll notice that the pilot here has the flutes machined into it because of course it's all one piece. Now that actually isn't bad at all because it'll reduce the friction when this pilot is in the hole, but this one is solid as you can see. Let's look at some other ones that are removable. 
Now, I don't know if I put the red tape on here years ago or not, but again, here's a counter bore with a set screw, so that pilot could be removed, and a mystery person <laughs> uh, taped it on there because it's the matching one. Notice there's a flat on the pilot so that it cannot twist on you. Now, if we look down on this complete set here, you're going to see a whole bunch of counter bores that do not have pilots in them. So there's four in a row, and I do not have pilots for those, but they would be fairly easy to make. They wouldn't even have to be hardened. But here's one that fits this particular one. And I need to clean up the hole a little bit. There's probably dirt in there, and this needs to be polished, and then it'll slide right in and can be tightened down on the flat. Okay, let's counterbore a few holes. So I'll be using this stand. Really, these are the most common ones here. I probably don't need these other ones at all. But I prepared a piece of three quarter inch thick aluminum. There's a three sixteenths hole, quarter inch, and five sixteenths. You can see the pilots fit in just right. Well, I guess. Since I did that the other day, there's the three-quarter. But this is kind of a morphodite here. I'm not going to use that. I don't know what that is. And I will be counter-boring those holes so that these cap screws and filister head screws fit. A fella should uh, do this on the drill press. Don't do these uh, with free... Don't freehand them with your DeWalt. And how deep do you go? until the head is below the surface is what you typically want. Could be deeper than that. Whatever you need or whatever the specs call for. Let's go over to the drill press. I am counter boring for a 3 8 socket head cap screw and I have the depth stop set. Just a little deeper. Perfect. Just a little bit below the surface. Let's do the other ones. Now I'm counter boring for a 5 16 18 socket head cap screw. I will now counter bore for a quarter twenty filister head screw. Depth stop has been set. And last but not least, I'm counter boring a hole for a ten twenty four socket head cap screw. There's the counter bores and there's the screws and here's the finished product. Now when you're done, take either a countersink like that or a file, knock off any burrs that there might be. One other thing now, as you're checking the depth, because you may be doing a hundred of these, a good way of checking it without taking it out of the drill press, make sure there's no chips in there and put it in upside down and see if you're deep enough because sometimes you're not going to be able to put this in in the drill press because the vise or something might interfere. So there is the 3 8 5 16 quarter inch and a number 10 just as samples. And what a nice job those counter borers do. Do you do counter boring in your shop? I would be remiss if I didn't give you a little extra credit. You can check out if you don't want to see this, but I counterboard thousands of holes in my life where I did not have the luxury of owning these, especially at school. So there is an option now. So I have drilled two 3 8 holes there, and this one is counterboard with a genuine commercially made counterbore, so it has a flat bottom to the counterbore. However, as I was saying, 
I have often used a drill, and here's an example of one that I did. So, but the bottom of the hole is not flat. It's at an angle, the same angle as your drill bit. So what I'm going to do now, since I love my cutaways, I'm going to cut this off camera and you'll see a cross section of the two and the difference and why it's more advantageous to use a counter bore than a drill bit because you may be really tightening this down and the head will chew its way into the soft aluminum if that is objectionable. It could cause a, a, a bolt to loosen up however or lose its torque I suppose if it were to be torqued. Okay, while you were in the bathroom, I was over at the bandsaw and I cut this corner out here just so you could see the difference. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but this is the one done with a drill bit and you can see that the bottom of the hole is not flat and this one is done with a counter bore. So, Possibly you can see the difference or the advantage of using a counter bore over a cheap drill bit. Does that show up? This is a page out of the little black book and you know there's actual dimensions for counter boring. And there they are in the left hand column. But of course I use Bagesse and Bagash and probably you will too. Are you aware that when you buy olive oil you can buy extra virgin or extra extra virgin or extra I don't know how many extras it's probably a lie but I'm giving you double extra credit so this is extra extra credit for those that are interested and I doubt if anybody is because this is kind of historical here but as I was drilling counter boring here these are both 5 16 18 cap screws but they're different versions this is the 1936 version, this is the 1960, well who cares, you're thinking. Well if you look here, you'll see that even though the screw thread is the same, the head and the socket is not the same. So when I miked this on the older series, it's 432 and the other one is 462. So they do not interchange necessarily. I don't know about the length. And then you can see here that this is a 732nds hex key and this is a quarter. So don't be confused if you have older screws sitting around and there might be different versions of these as well. That's what I'm trying to point out and I believe that's what I have in this big conglomeration of a set that I have and that's why some things do not necessarily work. So keep your eye open for that. I think they still use the 1936 version over in England. Let me know if you live in England what version you use and this can all be looked up in various handbooks as far as the diameters. But let me also tell you this that these 5 sixteenths as I said are not the same but that is not true through all the sizes. Most of the sizes are the same or about the same so you need to check on that. But isn't that interesting? Or not? Mr. Pete, why do you tell them stupid things like that? As usual, my short videos still run 10 or 15 minutes. They're not that short at all, are they? But did you enjoy the video? That pretty much concludes it. That's how you counter bore. These are counter bores. Do you have a nice set like this? Too many, really. That's all you need. All right. It's Mr. Pete saying so long for now and be sure and watch for the next video where I talk about spot facing and how spot facing is different than counter boring, if in fact it is at all. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, ring that bell and all of that stuff please. Subscribe if you haven't.